Morning, and uh, coming up, we have a man who needs no introduction. He is a legendary Texas oil man and a good friend of Squawk Box. Boone Pickens is in the house. We are going to get his thoughts on oil prices, on politics, on the fate of this nation's energy supply. Boone, you have a big plan to roll out this morning. We're gonna be, big one. You got a big plan to roll out this morning? Big plan. And we're going to be talking all about it. I wore the scarf. I love it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Help everybody. Yeah, Oklahoma man, State, good deal. Oklahoma State fight song. Thank we are you. all uh, geared up in orange today because we promised Boone we would the next time he came on. Right. Joe and I said we would show up. We'll do well, what we got to do. We will. Anyway, uh, if you haven't figured it out already, we are joined this morning by legendary oil investor Boone Pickens. He is here to unveil his plan to cut down energy consumption in the United States. If you didn't know it already, he is the CEO of BP Capital, but uh, he has a lot of other titles, including oil man and. Uh, Lately, we've been calling you the wind and natural gas man as well, Boone. That's good, and I like all that. But you remember, I started a as a junior geologist. Oh. As a junior geologist. That's what you were identified as. With, when you first started when out. When I first started, yeah. Well, you've been in the oil business a long time, and today you are unveiling a national plan. You are concerned about what's happening in energy. So what is the plan that you're rolling out today? Okay. The, the problem is that we are buying $700 billion dollars worth foreign oil every year. And that number is, is not going to stay at 700. It's going to move up because oil prices are going to move up. The people that have the oil are going to get as much for the oil as they possibly can. Is that wrong? No. I don't find anything wrong with what they're doing. It's just that we have been stupid enough to drift, drift, drift into the area where we're so dependent on foreign oil that we're paying 700 billion now and we'll pay more later. But uh, you've now, we, uh, back in, uh, well, it was 1970 that uh, we were importing 24%. Of, of our, our energy needs? Yes, 24%. And by, uh, by 1991, the Gulf War, we were importing 42%. And now we're importing almost 70%. So it's, uh, uh, we're, we are very close to a disaster for the country. The campaign that you are rolling out today includes a series of national advertisements that are going to start running on cable properties today. Uh, this is a huge campaign, and it's a way of reaching straight out to the people. Why are you doing that? Well, you know, I'm 80, and I've had uh, almost 60 years' experience in this business. I think I know it better than anybody else. Maybe that's a little pompous, but I do. I've been around a long time, and I've stayed active in the business. A lot of guys my age retired and uh, lowered their handicap and, and played a lot of golf and some cards at the club. I don't like that. I'd rather uh, work. So anyway, I've stayed current in the business. I think I have a story to tell. And the story is, is that uh, the country's in trouble. And we're right at the, uh, at the key point in the uh, presidential campaign. And I don't think the subject is being addressed properly. I don't think the American... I think the American people know something's wrong. Uh, they don't know exactly what's wrong. And uh, I'm going to explain the energy uh, situation to them, and I'm going to give a solution for how we uh, get out of the trap that we put ourselves in. And I want to elevate this into the presidential debate. Uh, it's total nonpartisan. I don't, uh, I'm always going to vote Republican, of course, but. I'm not working for John McCain, uh, and it's, uh, uh, but I, I want it to be nonpartisan. I want you to say, well, what do you want these two candidates to do? I want them to look at the Pickens plan and uh, give it serious consideration. In the past, you have acted as an energy advisor to Republican candidates. Why not do it that, that way this time around? Uh, I think this is too big for that. I think this is nonpartisan. Whichever candidate wins, uh, I want uh, them to tell us what they're going to do uh, about $700 billion. You're, you're sinking a lot of your own money into this campaign? How, how are you paying it's for this advertising? It's all my money. It's all your money. I don't have any partners. How, how much money are you putting into this campaign? A lot. Can you, can you specify? Should we be looking at uh, a few million dollars? Or how can, how can we put a More. number on this? More. <laughs> a lot of your own money? Yeah, a lot of my own money. You won't tell us more than that? 
uh, at a, you know, a, a, maybe before we're through country, that, uh, but I've committed to the, the first uh, uh, buys on television, and I think that's about 10 million. But you're going to uh, make it back in uh, in wind power investments. You know, uh, Joe, I, I, uh, I, sure, I expect to make money in whatever I put my money in, but that is, uh, is I understand. Yeah, it's secondary to what I'm trying to accomplish here. You're not going to spend your money, Boone. Uh, I, I believe you. You know what I mean? I mean, I everybody likes to keep. Uh, it's a game, and I see these guys. You know, they. You know, Redstone, Kerkorian. They, you know, I, they, they. They just keep. You know, it's a game. They. They want to uh, do the best they can. So I believe you. Know, but uh, the beautiful part of it is when Kirk makes money, when yeah. I make money, when Carl makes money. You know, all of us. There are a lot of pa there are a lot of taxes paid. There are, and I, that's I, good. I and I consider taxes to be a high class problem. When Exxon does well, there's a lot of taxes being paid that's too. That's right. Um, do you? Why do you call? I, I'm trying to figure out the, the U.S., the Saudi Arabia of wind. Do we just have a a, a a geography that is that why you say that, or because we have the ability to 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 pay for and build the the turbines? Why why is do we have a lot of wind? I don't know. In the in the U.S., are there some great places for there, it? There are great places for it. <clears throat> a lot of it. I mean, you can see the Himalayas, but you're not going to put turbines up in the Himalayas. A little bit, right? Uh, yeah, it won't work. We have the perfect spot, which is in the, in the interior of the country, a corridor from West Texas to the Canadian border. It's all been measured. The Department of Energy did a great study on it and clearly shows you could, you could uh, uh, they, they say 20% of our power could be generated by wind. You could do 40, 60, 80, whatever you want. Really? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's fabulous. The wind conditions in that part. It has a part to it that maybe we talk about for a couple of minutes anyway, is that Sweetwater, Texas is a model for what could happen throughout that corridor from south to north. And, uh, you know, the next one north of there will be 250 miles up at Pampa, Texas, where we're doing our our uh, Yeah, Sweetwater, wind. you don't own those turbines. No, right? I don't own anything there. I just fell in love with the place because I went out and saw what happened, because I saw Sweetwater 10 years ago, and it was like rural America. I mean, it's going downhill, and young people don't come back uh, to the town. You know you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's all over, uh, you know, uh, the United States. And so here, I saw that town go from 12 down below 10. Now it's back up above 12, and it's booming. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of young people on the streets, and, and uh, it's, you know, the town has something to offer now. And it's exciting to see because then you can just see another Sweetwater up at Pampa, Texas. Pampa will be the wind capital because that's my deal. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. That's where you've bought the 700 uh, turbines? That's right. right. And, and we'll have 4,000 megawatts there, and it'll be the b biggest wind farm in the world. But uh, you go from Pampa and you go up to uh, uh, Goodland, Kansas, and then Hastings, Nebraska, and right on up, just march up to, to Canada. And you can imagine the billions of dollars that will be spent in that quarter. And, you know, great jobs. And, and the thing about it is it's not like finding an oil field. You find an oil field and it's not long before it starts to decline mm -hmm. and then deplete. And then the oil field's gone. And, uh, but here, the wind doesn't stop. And, uh, well, Boone, we have a lot more questions about uh, the wind power, about what to do with natural gas, about what the rest of your plans are, where you think oil prices are headed. You're going to be with us for the next hour to talk about all those things? I thought I was going to be here all day. Oh, really? You're staying till uh, 5 p.m. now? Mm, sure. Perfect. <laughs> right. So it, it, because Boone's going to be spending such a long period of time with us, folks, if, if you want to write in and ask any questions of Mr. Pickens, feel free to do that. You can write in at squawk at cnbc.com.